RNA interference is an RNA-dependent gene silencing process. It was first used and documented experimentally by Florian Mello during their research into the C. elegans in 1988. They won the Nobel Prize for Physiology and Medicine. They are used as tools for genetics and genomics, and among their applications there are treatments for diseases such as cancer or even others that imply overexpression of some protein. The RNA involved in the process of silencing is one kind of non coding RNA. As we know, that is a term used to describe the RNA that does not translate into protein. There are two groups of non coding RNA small regulatory RNA and long non coding RNA. RNAi is the small regulatory RNA kind and includes micro RNA and small interference RNA. MicroRNA has an endogenous origin as it is the cell the one that produces it, while a small interference RNA is exogenous. Specific gene expression silencing by RNAi is a post transcriptional regulation mechanism conserved in eukaryotes. To use it as a tool, we can target a gene to silence by introducing a double stranded RNA in the cell, so its defense machinery recognizes it as a threat. In order to do that, we can introduce the double-stranded RNA directly or do it in the form of DNA. It will transcribe once it is in the cell. In this second case, it is necessary to create a hairpin, using for that the target sequence of the desired gene and that same sequence in reverse, inserting it in a vector or inside the chromosome. There are several synthetic RNA types used at genetic schools, which are the small interference RNA, short herpin RNA, and bifunctional short herpin RNA. The mechanism of action of small interference RNA goes like this. Long double-stranded RNA between 200 and 500 base pairs is introduced in the cells. In nature, this RNA comes from viruses or bacteria, but there are ways we can introduce artificial RNA in the cells too. This RNA is cut by Dicer, an endonuclease, a protein that forms a complex with PACT, a protein kinase RNA activator, and TRBP, which is a transactivation responsive RNA binding protein. The resulting RNA forms small double-stranded fragments of 21 or 23 nucleotides, which is small interference RNA. An helicase separates the two chains, one of which is degraded by endonucleases, while the other is directed to RNA-induced silencing complex, or RISC a complex constituted by several proteins, among which argonaut is found. Once it has mounted a small interference RNA, it reaches messenger RNA, and it is able to interfere with its translation into protein. It performs a negative regulation of the gene it has homology with. Interference can be done in two ways. First, Argonaut, one of the proteins in risk, is able to cleave the messenger with its ribonuclease activity in its PUE region, so that it cannot be translated into protein. Second, RNA can also attach itself with homology to small interference RNA, leading to the continued interference pathway, avoiding the expression of the target gene. Short hairpin RNA method is based on the introduction into the cytoplasm of a vector that carries a promoter and a nucleic acid insert, DNA, encoding the short hairpin RNA. The introduction can be done by transfection or in the case of mammalian cells through a viral vector, for example. The nucleic acid that was inserted reaches the nucleus and once it is there, with the intervention of polymerases, an RNA molecule is synthesized as precursor of short hairpin RNA. It travels to the cytoplasm, where it interacts with Dicer, TRBP and PACT, 
and loses its hairpin structure, becoming an equivalent to small interference RNA. Like small interference RNA, short hairpin RNA interacts with risk, producing either messenger RNA cleavage or proceeding to interrupt translation when it forms a double-stranded RNA biomology. It is relevant to say that meanwhile a small interference RNA is degraded within 46 hours from the moment it was introduced in the cell, short hairpin RNA activity can last for nearly three years, as it is transcribed from a stable template, which is a vector that stays in the nucleus. The bifunctional short hairpin RNA method is based on the same principles as the short hairpin RNA. It potentiates the mechanism of action of short hairpin RNA, improving its effectiveness and durability. For doing so, the expression vector encodes for two regions of short hairpin RNA. One's activity is cleavage dependent and the other's cleavage independent. On the one hand, the bifunctional short hairpin RNA is directed to risk, and each of the short hairpin RNA acts in an autonomous way. In the case of the cleavage dependent short hairpin RNA, the complex cleaves messenger RNA impeding its translation. On the other hand, cleavage independent bifunctional her short hairpin RNA pairs with the messenger RNA by imperfect complementarity, avoiding translation too. We have to bear in mind that this tool presents some dangers and disadvantages. For example, of targeting is possible. In other words, the RNA interference can, in some cases, bind to a messenger RNA that is not its intended target, causing the silencing of proteins that might be necessary for the cell and causing serious problems. Nevertheless, this tool can represent the cornerstone for treatment of diseases. One example is cancer. It allows the targeting of more than one gene simultaneously, even of different cellular pathways that intervene in tumor development. This tool also avoids the side effects of cancer therapy drugs and allows a more personalized treatment. It can also be useful for the industry, as we can develop organisms that are resistant to viruses, alter the composition and products of plants, or produce healthier oils, as in the case of cotton. We can get oil from the seeds of cotton, but the seed is rich in polyunsaturated fats. We want oils that are thermostable but also healthy. The perfect point is monounsaturated fatty acid, such as oleate. To do so, we can silence the gene that codes for the enzyme that turns oleate into polyunsaturated fatty acids. Many mysteries of RNA interference have yet to unfold, but one thing is certain. It has revolutionized the existing beliefs on DNA, RNA and protein control and function. Many companies have centered their attention in this new tool, although we are still some years apart from their generalization of RNA interference-based drugs. We cannot deny that RNA interference has already changed the way scientists think about inheritance, gene expression and genetics. <laughs>